Good evening, everybody. This is Johnny Seville from Acorn Wealth. This is your executive summary for stock setups for tomorrow, <laughs> which is the 19th of October, and coincidentally is also the very last day of the current open range. So open range went positive, of course, on the uh, 2nd of October. We set a range here with a high of 2521.2 uh, on the S&P. Uh, excuse me, 2529.23 on the S&P, and uh, we broke uh, above that the very next day, meaning that open range was to be bullish until options expiration of Friday. And once again, a successful open range. We have the S&P 500 has continued to move higher, and uh, obviously is very likely to close above that uh, above that level as of uh, tomorrow's close, unless something crazy happens overnight. But um, so so far so good. Uh, we're um, we're coming into open range obviously on Friday a new open range will be set so what happens after Friday is going to be very interesting uh, now keep in mind that not only do we have open range on Friday but we're also coming up on the anniversary of Black Monday that catastrophic day once upon a time that some of you may remember so um, <clears throat> before my time but uh, again we've uh, it's a bit of a historic event and um, uh, Monday's trading is going to open up a, uh, a new whole can of worms to see where this might market goes next. Uh, high yield bonds, one of our smart money indicators, as you can see, uh, did, 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 let's just clean this up a little bit and uh, focus in on the main things here. You can see that uh, open range, excuse me, uh, high yield bonds have actually uh, rallied over these last two days, retesting the, um, the rising wedge on the high yield bonds pattern. So I'll we'll be waiting to see whether this uh, proves to, to break through or not. So far, it still looks to me like it wants to uh, kind of uh, look like a bit of a head and shoulder. But uh, if we start to break into this zone, then hey, you know, we could still have a, a bit more of a bull market left. Um, we'll wait and see. Stocks above or below their 50-day moving averages, though, certainly have definitely continued their downward spiral. Uh, we've gone from 80% of stocks above their 50-day moving average to 73% of stocks. And, of course, if you look at the chart, that's just continuing down off that reversal we've been talking about for weeks. Uh, so far, that is certainly happening uh, as it currently stands. So there you go. Um, you can see that we've uh, reversed now two weeks so far down. Um, in, in zero of occasions in the last seven years has uh, this ever turned around and gone back up again. 100% uh, of the time we've gone down after hitting 80%, uh, it has resulted in at least a correction to this 40 to 30% mark, which means uh, an opportunity to start looking for really weak stocks. Uh, one of the stocks that uh, came up in uh, the Patterns and Probabilities class tonight was uh, HCN. And uh, if you have a look at the weekly chart, you'll uh, you'll see here that we have a um, uh, quite a nice looking uh, head and shoulder pattern. So there you go. There's the top, and you can see down the bottom. There's the bottom. We yet to reach that neckline, but it's a pretty much perfect head and shoulders as far as I can see, which uh, which uh, suggests that we may get a breakdown. Uh, all the way as low as $24, which if you look back in time, just so happens to be the uh, support back in 08. So this is a um, quite a bearish signal for HCN, and uh, certainly if it breaks below the low of this candle, below 66.67, uh, I'd be looking at a short. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the first target I'd be looking for would be uh, this area here, 55.33. Um, which is uh, obviously a $11.30 drop, basically, $11.34 drop, uh, which is uh, 20, 20, close to 20%. Um, and then for a second target, that could get all the way down to uh, into that $26 range. Uh, so long term, let's say that, that, that trade could take months and months and months to pan out. So that's a longer term outlook. And um, it's one of these, the one that some of the strategies we'll be discussing in the uh, Tuesday night's uh, Smart Money Workshop for those of you who've enrolled in that. And um, uh, if we go and uh, zoom in to the short term, uh, bing, there you go, there's another head and shoulder pattern right there. So on the daily chart, you can also see a head and shoulder has printed itself on the daily chart. So if we rally up to $70, that's also going to be a short signal. And um, uh, looking at a... Uh, a short-term target. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. 
looking at a short term target of 63.33. Um, same thing if it breaks 60, uh, 66, uh, 67, uh, it still uh, it still looks like a good breakdown even to that level. But you may get a little bit of a rally up, giving you a better entry better entry point better entry point. Now, if you have a look at the um, at the quotes here on Yahoo, it's uh, talking about a earnings date of October 31st to November 6th. So um, you can uh, you can suspect that if we get a rally up to there, that could be an earnings play using some options. So we'll wait to see where we go from here, but certainly keep your eye on this one. Um, the, uh, there is obviously a lot of good divergence in the market right now. One of the other stocks that we talked about, MYOK, as a um, which which came from the Smart Money Scan, will be t uh, will be teaching and, and uh, running live on Tuesday night as well. Um, MYOK, as you can see, this one has broken down below the support and uh, is looking really, really, really good so far. Um, it's obviously well into profit territory so far. Uh, the money flow looks like it's about to break through zero. And um, again, if you remember, the insiders are pretty healthily selling off uh, in this one. So go to, we go to Open Insider, type in HCN, uh, excuse me, uh, not HCN, the, um, what should we call it, uh, MYOK. And we've got some pretty decent heavy side selling, 25 million, 25 million, 62% of selling. Um, you know, this is all very good stuff when you're looking for a, a, a short signal. So um, you do have some buying in there as well. So a bit of a counter trend um, opinions coming in here. But I like it. Um, okay, so uh, obviously until we've had open range print, I'm uh, not too ambitious about jumping into um, many new trades really want to just wait to see how the ones we've already got pan out and what happens with open range uh, so I'll be using the uh, next two days to cull any positions that I uh, that don't perform tomorrow and uh, look for Friday as a day to kind of uh, uh, reduce risk update stop losses and so forth so uh, to tomorrow night and Thursday night excuse me tomorrow night we'll be uh, discussing uh, some of those uh, setups uh, so make sure you uh, can try and attend that otherwise we will be sitting out a recording but let's go through and have a look at uh, some of the longs uh, that are in play at the moment. Uh, PLXP, obviously, I sent out as alert the other day. Uh, I, I do own a position in this, and um, so I've got a stop loss at seven uh, seven ninety six, I think. And uh, so so far it's looking good. It's just, it's gonna it's it's very likely to it could pull back to support. So we'll see what happens. But if it if it continue breaking through, uh, if it certainly if it breaks above the high here of nine forty one, we should get a a strong rally from there as it's uh, that's the key reversal point. So far it's just kind of consolidating. We'll wait and see. Uh, win um, this one also all of these have the smart money presence strong money flow accumulation this one's just trying to get ready to blow up it, it hasn't been able to uh, to get the steam it needs yet but now it seems to have crossed above the 50 day moving average and it's starting to bounce um, again, we, we, this has already hit its early aggressive entry signal we uh, sent out at 197. Um, the second entry signal we talked about is if it breaks above 226, which is going to be the high, um, as you can see, of this candle, 226. So it needs to trade above that. So really we're looking for it to, to, um, to, to, to get above, say, 227. Um, uh, so say 228, for example. Uh, the target I have on this is 293. Um, so that one's another one to keep an eye on, BBOX. Uh, I hold this one still personally as well. Um, it's just, again, similar story. It needs to break through the moving average. If it can break above that, um, there shouldn't be much holding it back. If, especially if it breaks, the, the real test is going to be what happens when it breaks 387, and if it can. If it can break 387, which is up uh, obviously more than 10% from where we're currently at, um, I would have a target of 467 which I do. This is one I hold in my portfolio. XCNE, also hold this in my portfolio. Uh, this is going to be a uh, interesting couple of days. It's, uh, it's, it's had a big push today and was able to get all the way up to 350, but uh, gave a lot of that back um, in the later parts of the market. Now, I've seen this before. If you look at examples like JASN, um, which is another one that I, I hold, uh, you'll see that uh, it rallied up here and a very, had a very sharp reversal before 
going off to the races. So I, I haven't given up on that. The, 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 what concerns me more is the fact that the money flow has rolled over so sharply. But there is very strong money flow insider buying happening on the stock. Uh, once more, we'll go back to the uh, to the insi open insider level. You can see we've got 283% of buying, uh, a new buyer, 44%, 40% buying. Um, all, you know, all these transactions that are, are new or or are significant in terms of percentages. So I, I'm I'm willing to let this one run, and uh, I'm not too uh, eager to jump out of this, and I want to give it some room to breathe. So uh, this may pull pull back. It may pull back to three dollars before it rallies to four. We don't we don't know. But uh, again, this is a something that um, because it's got the, the level of insider buying that it does. Um, it's got some special consideration. Anth uh, also own this one in my portfolio. Uh, this is obviously just trying to build some power here. And um, as you can see, just kind of uh, rallied up. It's pulled back to support, trying to lift off uh, at the moment. And uh, it picked up some volume today, just a little bit. And uh, uh, so keep an eye on this one. Uh, if this one starts to uh, starts to push, uh, it's obviously already hit our entry criteria of 162. And my targets were currently stand at uh, 287 and 517. <clears throat> And as we go down the list, almost at the end, uh, this is the third last one, Din Equity. Uh, again, I hold this one in my personal portfolio. Uh, I've got a lovely little fallen angel here. And uh, as you can see, it's just uh, it's got insider buying. The money flow is really strong. We've got an Eve top here, and it's just trying to challenge that to break out. So Din, really like that. I'm already in it, but uh, for a secondary entry point, uh, it, it needs to break 45.83 to get its next push, and uh, that could be a, also a possible second entry point if you're looking for a setup. Last one on the list, uh, so second last, TTI. Uh, I own this one as well. Uh, this one is um, obviously consolidating downward after a nice big fallen angel launch from 220 up to 280. So, I mean, obviously already a, a money tank, a great opportunity to take some profit there. As you can see, it was a, a lovely little setup where it broke out of this kind of downward channel. I'm just, I'm just going to draw these on uh, there. So downward channel, uh, which is bullish. Whenever you break below a, a downward channel, that tells you an even bigger bullish move is potentially coming. And as you can see, it's uh, rounded up. And it's now just sitting on the top of both the downward channel and the bigger downward channel. So I, I'm quite happy with this. I'm holding it and we'll uh, let this one pan out. Uh, if you're not in it, then you could look for a breakout above 283, maybe the go signal there. And last one, CRC. Also in this one, uh, obviously this has uh, been a great performer, and again, much like TTI, is just uh, consolidating downwards at the moment. It's uh, caught the uh, caught the the support of of the moving average so far. So we're starting to look at what we can see here is most likely a pennant formation. So um, when we see a pennant, we look to see what. Uh, the smart money indicator is doing now this is okay it's still positive and it's just starting to tilt upwards and this is common in a consolidation pattern the fact that it's positive is good what we so what i draw my um um, research more from is the insiders. You can see we've got some uh, some insider buying, small, but um, enough for me to give it a shot to hold it long. If it starts to break down much below this pennant, uh, then I would I'd kill it. Um, so there you go. That is your executive summary for tonight, uh, and a bit of an update on all of the uh, some of the positions we've been following for the last few weeks. And um, I'm we'll be looking forward to catching up with all of you tomorrow night for trading room. And, uh, of course, uh, leading up to the Smart Money uh, trading course on Tuesday, for those of you who are registered for that. Uh, so, uh, see you tomorrow night. Have a wonderful evening, and happy trading.